Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're gonna to talk about an important organic chemistry topic, thermodynamic and kinetic products. While you may have memorized the, while you may have memorized what the kinetic and thermodynamic products are when doing an electrophilic addition, the MCAT doesn't care and will test your understanding of the underlying concept. Luckily, it's simple once broken down. Let's start by drawing a free energy reaction coordinate diagram. To analyze this diagram, we want to understand what the different aspects mean. A good way to do this is to plot extreme numbers on the y-axis. When we look at the top of the graph here, where x is, we see that x has a lot of free energy. Well, if you have a lot of free energy, you are going to be a very reactive compound. And if you're a very reactive compound, it's just another way of saying you are not stable. Now, conversely, when we're at that lower energy y state, we have lower free energy. We know it's lower free energy because free energy is our y axis. This lower energy means that we're going to be less reactive and be more stable. So this product is going to stick around. For example, you could think of X as isopropyl alcohol. It evaporates as soon as you put it down. Whereas Y, with this lower energy, this is kind of like microplastics. They stick around forever. Let's start putting this into practice by drawing one of the most popular organic chemistry reactions. A plus B equals C. Let's plot this. So if we zoom in on our reaction coordinate, we we'll put A and B up here. I'll put A and B right here. And I'll put product C somewhere down here. So we're going to have that initial activation energy to get us down to our product C. By analyzing this graph, we see that the reactants A and B have a higher free energy compared to product C. This means that we will expect the reaction to proceed in a forward direction from A to B to C, assuming there's enough activation energy. Now I'm gonna complicate it by adding the second most popular organic chemist reaction. A plus B equals D. Again, we're gonna start with the same product, but I'll draw this here in red. So let's say we'll put D up here and give it a little less activation energy compared to C. So now we have two possible products from the same reaction. We need some sort of language to talk about what these different products are and where they come from. How can we predict? Are we gonna have C or D? This is where the title of the video comes in. A kinetic product is one that is pathway dependent. This is a fancy way to say that it depends on the mechanism and activation energy. Whereas the thermodynamic product only cares about being the most stable product it can. It's going to have the lowest free energy. This also means that the kinetic product is going to form faster at lower temperatures compared to the thermodynamic product. In our diagram then, what type of product is C? Well, because C has the lowest free energy compared to D, the lower free energy compared to D, this means it must be the thermodynamic product. Well, Who's the kinetic product? Can C also be the kinetic product? In theory, it could, but let's see what our graph is showing us. To figure this out, we wanna look at the activation energy. We see that D has the lowest activation energy compared to C, which has the highest activation energy. This means it's gonna take more energy to get A and B over that hump to make these products. Because D is lower, it means that D is going to be our kinetic product, assuming everything else is equal. Now, this is a critical skill you will want to develop and master for the MCAT, because again, they are going to test your understanding of this concept. It doesn't matter if you memorize from this video that C is you know, more stable than D. It's applying these concepts to problems, looking at that activation energy. Oftentimes on the MCAT, what they're going to do is they'll draw exactly what I drew here. They'll give you this sort of coordinate diagram. And my recommendation is always figuring out what is the thermodynamic product first, because that's the most simple. Thermodynamic is always going to be the lowest one. However, depending on that activation energy, sometimes the thermodynamic product is also the kinetic product. 
So what that would look like, let's change this. Let's say that instead of D having a small activation energy, D had a really high activation energy. Well, now because D has a higher activation energy, it's gonna form more slowly. So in this case, now C is both our thermodynamic and kinetic product. This is the thinking you will need to develop to do well on the MCAT. But I believe in ya. Thank you for watching our video on the different types of kinetic and thermodynamic products, and I will see you next time.